in the macro political situation. But for me, it's as the fact, you know, it's like when you put it, the micro political in the philosophy of the universalism of itself, <laughs> you can see you in the other, you know, so that's why we call micro political and, and yes, that's what, where it comes from. Thank you. Um, and you do mention in, in, in the actual show, you do mention other events unfolding um, in Mexico, just like Juan Carlos said about the different murders, um, like children murdering each other. And I wanted to ask you, how, how do you see the relationship between the violences that you portray, for example, or talk about in the play and the, the systemic or institutional violence in Mexico? Does violence start from the bottom up or does it trickle down in your view? It's for me. It's really complex because I think in Mexico we, uh, as I as I grew for as I grew uh, a few time ago, we live in a constant risk. You know, we live in a in a context of risk, and the risk of being disappeared, the risk of being part of countless number of feminists. You know, the the rise day by day. Uh, and in parallel to the large artistic work we can see and we can uh, 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 develop the murders and disappear multiply, you know. So it's really complex to 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 understand how. As Luz Emilia also says, we, need, we live in a very difficult situation because we live in a narco-political situation, you know, where the government, it's a representation. Government represents that it's the government, <laughs> but actually the government, it's not a really a uh, right state you know where where you where you can trust or something else and and i think this narco political situation is really connected to neo neoliberalism you know as a way of culture where values are really means you know the values of 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 subjective the values of love the values of compassive they are they are back and uh, they are supplied by the money no, so they are supplied by the money and from the culture of representation too, because we are very worried about Netflix or I don't know, but I'm really worried about what, what uh, Netflix and movies and everything also represents, you know, it's like, it's, it's an open window where, where maybe child's called, you know, watch what this culture is and, I don't know. It's 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 really complex. I guess it starts from the families because you know we have a, a lot of poor and misery. So starting from this point, you know, uh, the money takes a lot of revenge. <laughs> so I can say this. I don't know. It lose Emilia. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome back, Luz Emilia. Um, we were just talking about the relationship between microviolence and macroviolence and whether what's going on with the Mexican government or um, even international politics affects uh, violences in small units like families. And I wondered whether you have a take on that as well. Well, yes, I think it is very, very connected. And what we are watching now is that one of the most influential countries in the world um, is encouraging all kinds of discrimination, uh, the, the cult for money, as Laura was saying, and also all this cult for uh, violence and, and the guns and all this. And they are uh, giving all this influence through Netflix and all these uh, representational uh, 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 different platforms. And I don't see we are getting some uh, counterpart in anything. Also, uh, the, the life is becoming much more uncertain. Uh, even the situation when I was, I, you know, you read the place of 19th century, like Wojciech or the Weavers, or, or, or even you go uh, back, life has 
been very violent for humanity. Humanity is violent by itself, but now it's becoming uh, kind of legalized after a, a time in which in the speech and reflections in education, there was a try to uh, to to stop it, to, to have a question on this. And I think we are in a very dangerous moment in the world and in, in Mexico and other countries because of this, um, this violence, um, you know, support that you are. And also all these, you know, all these movies, the main thing you can find in any of these platforms like uh, Prime Video or whatever is always like, Um, the serial killers. Uh, there, there is like, uh, like uh, an exaltation of violence and not enough reflection on uh, solidarity. So uh, activities like this, like uh, theater, which is the, the presence that we cannot have it right now in all the places, but is uh, a place to, to have a reflection, to give questions, to to think about it and not only to consume it. And um, I think it's important that we support and we encourage and, and, and we uh, go to these alternatives. Thank you. Uh, Juan Carlos, do you want to add anything to that? Um, yeah, maybe um, I think revenge is a small symptom of what is happening in our country. Uh, forced, uh, forced um, um, disappearances, feminicides, political corruption, trafficking uh, in women, uh, violence against uh, children. And of course, there's a connection with wider events, not only in Mexico, but around the world. And that thing I think is, that is geopolitics, uh, a symptom network of violent events in the treatment of humanity uh, in search of power of conquer territories and um, it's about money of course and have the power and and i said and as i said i think it's a symptomatic it's a, like a um, snowball and it became and it becomes symptomatic to remain silent and not to raise your hand and not to exercise our rights to be indifferent to the other and to the social and political situation of our country in our countries, in our uh, work areas, and even from our homes. And I think uh, it starts from, as the question, from ground up, and also it trickles down. Uh, what we have to do is not, what we, ha what, what we have to do is not to allow violence to rise up. Thank you. Um, and uh, what challenges do you find, both of you, in fact, all three of you as artists um, uh, and theater critics, journalists working um, in independent theater, um, exposing these violences um, and um, trying to, to investigate them and show people the consequences? Well, for, for me, the first <laughs> challenge is to keep alive. <laughs> Because as a woman and as a, as, a, as a creator, you know, as I told, the risk, the constant risk to be, to, to, to stop living, it's still all the time, you know. So for me, in this way, after, after we... <laughs> We pass the way to, to be alive. It's like um, the challenge, it's really huge now, you know, because after pandemic situation too, it's like how, if, if uh, now at the same time, um, I, I just will go a little back uh, what Lusamila was speech uh, telling. It's like, Yeah, at the same time, we have all this horrible frame. <laughs> it's, it's really uh, happening, uh, a really strong, uh, powerful of women together, you know? It's like really huge power in. And next, uh, last week, uh, a collective of feminism, feminist uh, women took the National Commission of Human Rights 
So they took it and and they won't leave it. It's an occupation, under occupation, because they are uh, uh, making their voice their voice aloud and uh, shouting and 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 that's for me really uh, gives me back the the um, the uh, wondering that something will come back well after the pandemic situation because I was really afraid, you know. The pandemic situation is like they took away the public space as community. It's and now we are going to we are returning to take the public space, and also I think uh, the the theater will take a more powerful. I, I I wish you know, and I hope in a way to 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 think really think about what it's need to think about. I guess everything it's need to think about in any point of view. It's not something only, but but I think like, like yes, we have valorized life, we valorize the time. So maybe I I will the the challenge will be which topics are we going to talk about now and and how we will talk about it. You know how. So to reflect a lot, I think the challenge to reflect and act <laughs> with this consequence, I think. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, if anyone wants to add anything, please feel free to step in. If not, well, uh, uh, yeah. well I think uh, the challenge is that we don't know when we are really going to be able to be in the streets and in the public space because uh, even the government says that uh, the situation of the pandemic in Mexico is better even in the world. We are watching the racing again of this uh, uh, sickness, this uh, pandemia, and we don't know when we are going to have the, the vaccine. So uh, it's, it's difficult to know what is going and when it's going to happen. I think the challenge is also to be able to touch the spectators and to convince uh, the, the society that what the, the, the artists do and that theater is important. And not being concessive, not by uh, entertaining or uh, you know doing things that will not bother the, the spectator with questions or whatever. I think everybody's looking to to, or, or many people is trying to find answers or to have the right questions. And the challenge is how to connect in societies in which might be not um, like a tradition very well established. For example, in Argentina, you have a wide support of spectators to what is happening in theater. But in Mexico, it has to be created much more than in Argentina. So one of the challenges is this, and also to always uh, have a, a better quality of thought because it's a very fine intellectual activity. Theater can be very, very subtle and uh, go to the, to the very central questions, but you have, we all have to do an effort of thinking and being lucid and having a, a interesting and wide and strong views of the reality that is around us. Thank you. Um, do you feel um, that in Mexico there is a movement of uh, political or social theater? Uh, do you as artists feel part of a movement or do you see one um, shaping up anytime in the future? Well, I see that we have a, a very wide theater possibilities and one very strong and every day stronger is the political theater in, because even the community was not organized really. And after all this that I described, after the violence, you know, a roost with Calderon, and now what is happening with all these uh, supports and possibilities that you had from the state in, in, in a way that in somehow there was a, um, a free of speech because uh, there were not real controls, direct controls 
that they were going to give you a scholarship and then there was a censorship directly. Somehow there was some freedom. We don't know because things are changing and it doesn't seem to be the scenery in front. I think this now, because I am in many different chats, I see people getting organized and taking seriously that the situation is not easy and that we have to help each other. So I can see that it's getting stronger and stronger for the women, for the, for the disappear. Somehow we are learning to organize. So that's hopeful. I mean, it, it arises certain hope that things might be, you know, we can have bad governments, but we should become a better society. Yes, and, and I just want to add in the same way, it's like, uh, as we have this really in front, you know, this like really in front and really clear. I think uh, the movement, if I can say it's a movement, I don't know if it's a movement, but maybe what I what I can see from myself, it's like I we are the art. It's really want to be connect with the society, you know, and and in this way the art and activism, for example, uh, are working together. And in this way, it's, it's really interesting because it's not that art will be now the activism, it's not supplying, it's like working together. Each one, what they know how to do, and but together, you know, actually, before talking with you, I was talking with Mario Vergara. He is an activism. He is searching uh, from his brother. And I was telling, hey, Mario, I can talk to him. I can say, I share you this. I do this. I do theater. And you do activism, you know. And in the same way, we are walking together and walking together to try to explain this horror, you know. And not just maybe in the art more to explain, to reflect, and in the activism to uh, have uh, to have the answers and to have the facts, you know. So for me, this is the movement. It, I can say it's a transdisciplinary scene, you know, because the theater, yeah, we have a lot of theaters, but the theaters in the way in the way I'm connect is the theater that it's not only built with theater. It's a theater that can uh, connect with science, that can connect with activism, with can connect with uh, history, with critical, with experts, with families, with society. And the in this way, the art for me is the it's like a hacker, <laughs> a hacker to, to, to can put together different persons in the same stage, you know? And for me, that's the important. It's to put together different persons who comes from different frames and different parts and talk together what this is about. <laughs> yes. Absolutely, yeah. We at Besma feel exactly the same way. And, and we, we try to use theater as a way of bringing into wider society certain ideas that people are uh, fighting for, you know, make them more, more accessible, more mainstream and, and more challenging. And also to show that, like Lucemila was saying earlier, you know, violence has consequences. Because um, if I'm correct, Lucemila, you weren't, you weren't criticizing the idea of showing violence, but showing violence without consequences, violence as a product, violence as fun. Yeah, violence is as fun as, as the only way that you can be entertained and with no possibility to have a, a counterpart of uh, having a second thought or a certain reflection. There was a very, very big discussion around cinema, for example, in which some people were saying that Quentin Tarantino was the producer of violence, which is very innocent because it, it's not that way. It's just a society that worships money, violence, 
humiliation. Somehow, it, it, it in different ways, some of them, like cinema and certain theater, is just like the praising of it. For example, with the narcos. And I'm not talking about uh, giving any censorship, not at all. But different instances of reflecting, of uh, problematizing the situation, uh, not normalizing and idealizing those who commit all these uh, violent situations. And also very worrying is these societies like American society, Brazilian society, Mexican society, which are more or less the same, that are dividing and they fuel their power by uh, excitating the hate, the hate for the other, and all these feelings, I think it's very dangerous. So theater as a place where uh, you can reflect on values, on, on the human conditions, a very flexible place uh, of meeting where you can be with the other and you can um, have many, many uh, possibilities of creating structures and you can heal the people. For example, in Mexico, theater is also a healing instance or in Latin America, like accompanying the people that is suffering by uh, show, I somehow uh, showing society that it is happening, visualizing and yet healing and accompanying the situation. And that's what I think that it's not a fact of censorship. It is the fact of creating um, thought, critical thought, and uh, questions, and, uh, and 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 inviting society to become responsible, co-responsible to what is happening. Thank you, Luis Emilia. Um, Juan Carlos, uh, apart from being a creator uh, and sometimes performer, you're also a producer. And I was wondering if you could tell us a bit about how funding works um, in Mexico and what your experience has been trying to fund political work and more radical work. Well, um, I think it's important, as Laura say and Luz Emilia, about uh, independent companies, independent artists, uh, of course, there is a, a fellowships here in Mexico, uh, fellow, and, uh, and uh, we already apply to them. Um, but of course, it's not enough, and we have to create some new strategics. And I think it has to be with the collaboration with other artists, and um, it, we have to be independent in all the way and um, you know, defend our thoughts and our work together. And um, I think we have the right to apply to all that um, scholarships. And, and I think it's, the, it's a very, um, the effort that we do in Mexico is titanic as in other countries, but here in Mexico, we have some kind of support. But um, I think, and I repeat, I think it's important work together and um, and be more political and be conscious of our um, environment, what is happening, uh, speak, talk about what is happening in our country, put on the stage and uh, occupying the, the public spaces with all that uh, manifestations of, um, I don't know, not being quiet and not be silenced. Uh, and um, our work have to speak aloud. Um, do you mostly rely on private sponsorships or corporate sponsorships or um, are there any public funds that you can apply to as well? Uh, I do the three of them like um in uh, the scholar i mean money from the government and also with the private uh, companies and uh, and of course with a social uh, civil like sociedad civil social i don't know the name in english now but i think uh, three of them are so important and put together and uh, of course it's possible Thank you. Um, I have another question regarding history. Um, Luz Emilia has uh, briefly uh, mentioned 
um, violence throughout our history. And I wanted to ask whether, um, this is to all of you, whether you think that um, Mexico's colonial history um, and the imperial history in that area has affected um, Mexican society and therefore Mexican political theater? Well, yes, the, the history in Mexico as any colonial country has been extremely violent. And also because of the Inquisition and all these prosecutions and a violence that was, for example, in, in this very uh, uh, a society in, 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 in segments like very racial, racist society in Mexico, no women, no people born in Mexico would have any uh, any possibility to have a post in the government or sometimes not even to be owner of any land if you were not born in Spain for, you know, after the Mexican conquest, that was itself very violent. But uh, in, uh, in, in the 19th century, also there was a lot of violence and very turbulent the, after the independence in 1910-21 was when it was uh, established. We had constant wars, invasions, you know, Maximiliano came to Mexico, he was killed here, and a, a lot of instability. And then a dictatorship that was violent also, Porfirio Diaz, and uh, with not with the rich, but with the poor, and there was some form of uh, covert slavery. And in the 20th century, there was uh, the revolution and certain middle class emerged, certain higher class emerged. And in the cities and in certain parts, we had this uh, stabilization somehow and growth. But there was a lot of violence against the uh, Indian. I mean, all these original towns, original uh, in, in Chiapas and uh, this violence of um, discrimination of non-opportunities and hunger. In Mexico, we have always, and we have now, the violence, the violence of hunger. 60 million people in this country are starving, you know? So um, I think there is a, a history of violence, but we didn't see uh, the violence in the public wide range spaces as we are watching at it now. You can see corpses, you know, cut hairs, uh, hanging from uh, bridges. And uh, it, it's really generalized that some, some macabre, extreme violence, like in a civil war, like we were in a war. And it's a war to, a war to control the territory between different crime groups, but the crime groups are involved with the government. So yes, our history has been violent with some uh, stages in which violence became localized. The problem is not that now we have a generalized violence. Um, and in the play Revenge, um, there is a there is a part about versions of memories and and everybody's version of how something uh, came to pass. And this is a question to everyone, so feel free to jump in. Um, whether you in Mexico in Mexican society you see people telling themselves or perpetuating um, versions uh, of events or an alternative history or an alternative view of history. What I, what I was talking with Laura the other day is that there is a tradition of honor of the, the, the role that men have to give, uh, uh, you know, in, in society. So if, if they hurt somebody of yours, there's also a question of honor. And I think it should be questioned. Like, uh, of course, the, the government is not, uh, we have no a state of, of, of law. We have no state of law. So many people have to go and look for revenge by themselves. I, and I think that we should search for the values about roles. We have a lot of crimes of hate 
against LGTB communities. So I think it comes out of certain values. Violence is promoted by certain view of reality, of the duty that you have to do something in front of certain situation. And I question myself, we are like back in the Greek theater before uh, Laura Estiara, you know, that uh, after this uh, play, uh, Orestes shouldn't go and keep on killing everybody. So there is like a tribunal that is mm -hmm. stated and the state of law starts. What we have to fight for is to go through and deconstruct all these values that promote violence that have to do with women, with manhood and all this. And also we have to promote state of law. For example, now our president is launching a, 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 you know, a public uh, uh, searching that if we, the Mexican citizens want the ex-presidents who were uh, thieves and corrupted should go to jail. Something which is really advanced. It shouldn't be asked to the people. There is a state of law. It's not if we want or not. We have a constitution. They, he should go and, I mean, he's the, the, the uh, general attorney. If we are going to ask the people who is going to be punished or not, we are going back to Mao and to all these popular tri tribunals that is very dangerous. It's like just uh, like a public uh, spectacle on death and justice and, and all this. So that's what I think that we, we, we should recognize the value of certain institutions, change those institutions if they are corrupted and they don't work. But otherwise, how are we going to do if we don't uh, get to uh, a, a, an agreement in which what we think should be done, should not be done, is crime and what is not crime. I think we are in a refounding. We are really changing a, a paradigm in, 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 in the world. And we have this challenge to think and, and, and refound many things. And uh, that's the state of things. No? Yes, I, I, I just want to add something. Yeah, like for me also, I'm with Luz Amelia in everything she has uh, uh, said. And also I find something in, in what the, the question before you asked, you know, the colonialism and everything. For me, the theater as a, as a space uh, where it's not reality, but it's um, in a, a place in the middle of everything, you know. It's a really opportunity. What I what I can see, to to you know to to open the critical thought, but also to displace. First of all, to accept our inconscience, our colonial inconscience. You know, we okay. have it. It lives in us, and we have it. And and in this way, for me, it's really important when I work to have something that I say, for example, uh, self-attack, self-attack, you know? It's like, first, first I have to attack myself <laughs> in one way to, to, to try to understand why I think this or why I feel this, you know? And after I can compare with, with, with the outside world. But for me, the theater is this place to confront yourself, first of all. And, and, and for me, it's like to, to, to get out of the place of the victim, you know? Sure. It's like we have to get away from this place. Uh, uh, because if you only stay in the big team of colonialism and everything, yeah, yeah, it's part of everything. We are big teams, yes, we are. But at the same time, <laughs> we can, we can like, like move of this place and and stop repeating the hate and 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 the resist. Res, resentism, I don't know, a resentimiento, resentment we have, you know, and 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 it's really healthy to do theater, you know, because in theater for us, for me, you can you can kill your mother, you can kill your ideas, <laughs> and 
reappear uh, and, and practice the reappearance infection of a new way of thinking and also to forgive. This is revenge for me, you know? It's a place where I want to say, I'm, I was watching the play and I say, okay, revenge, it was about because I felt really guilty of a lot of things. And I want to do this piece to say, hey, I'm sorry. Mm. I'm sorry of my thing. I'm sorry what I think. I'm sorry. I don't want to think more. I, I don't want to think more in this. Mm -hmm. And I share with you as a ritual and maybe, you know, as a ritual and, and everybody and I open the space to the, to the people to, to say sorry also, you know, to the self and to, and that's, that was for me the, the healthy I, I felt after doing this, you know, it's like, we can repair, yes, we can repair in the imaginary in the fiction, in our bodies, we can, we can tell the story we want to tell in, in just one hour and mm -hmm. it's enough, you know? It's enough to reconstruct the critical thought and, and to imagine another futures possible. I think. And perhaps yeah. when the self is in balance through this ritual that you talk about in the theater, then we can look out towards the problems of society and then see our place in those problems and reflect uh, yes. in those as well. Juan Carlos, did you find the process healing as well? Or how was it for your family as well? Because it was a very personal story. Was it, was it okay with them that you did this project? No, uh, of course not. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it was a very painful process. Um, when I, I have to make um, familiar research, with that event of my grandmother, I did some interviews to my aunts. Um, I I take with me uh, my cell phone hiding uh, because they didn't know that I was recording the conversation about that secret because that event was a top secret and they were very angry that my mother told me. And, um, and in revenge, my aunts told me more secrets from my mother, and um, and I thought, and I and I think they did that in revenge, because of my mother told me the secret, the family, the familiar secret, and uh, of course when they told me that story about my mother, it was so painful for me. But I think I I just accept that uh, because it was the price that I had to pay for, you know looking for something and uh, of course revenge has been a very healing process because i realized that i don't have a family uh, i mean that i um, that my family my family is not um good they are not good persons <laughs> i mean uh, and, and i realized that i i also have that bad feelings and um, i am violent and I feel anger and I want to kill somebody <laughs> sometimes. And, and of course, as Laura said in theater, you allow yourself to be in that kind of person and uh, to be violent. And, um, and it's okay to just healing yourself. Um, and of course, uh, for me, what's very painful, but of course, realizing that I'm not a good person and uh, I'm just asking for, um, um, as Laura, sorry for being, for, for being this person. But, but then I realized that I, have, that, I'm, that I don't have to be sorry for feel these bad things. Uh, who tell that, it, that, that, that those feelings are bad? Of course, when you... Uh, get pain to, uh, to, to others, of course, maybe are bad, but having you inside, just to know that you have that possibilities, I think it's okay. And um, yeah, for me, what's that? And I said a lot of painful words against my mother, my grandmother, 
Um, <laughs> and today I do, I don't know if I regret for having said them, but I reflect and I, and I, and I don't have to be sorry. Thank you. There are there is light and shadow in all of us, uh, isn't there? <laughs> um, we just spend a lifetime uh, learning how to act on the light and not on the shadow, don't we? Um, unfortunately, we are running out of time. Um, but if you, if anyone has any closing comments, then uh, please. Um. No, just to say thank you very much for this space and and thank you for sharing and and for put us together again after five years. <laughs> and thank you, Luz Emilia, also for being part of this talk and always refreshing all, all the context you can bring to us and and not to forget where we are stand. <laughs> and <laughs> And yes, thank you. Thank you very much for everyone. And, and, and yeah, just the only last thing just to say it's that for me it was really important revenge because in the way that most of the people at the end, uh, most of them don't talk about the, the anecdote, you know, the story. They talk about the violence and in themselves, inside them and how they process in the outside. So for me, that was a goal. And I think it was interesting that. So yeah, that's it. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, just uh, in my case, yes. Thank you for this invitation. Thanks for inviting me. Thanks for sharing all your thoughts and feelings and emotions. And I have to say one phrase of revenge. Uh, we only have versions of who we are. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much for this uh, this festival, this uh, uh, importance that you are giving to the political and the micro political uh, theater possibilities and the connection between different countries and different human beings that we are coming from uh, essential human situations with different regional context. And also I want to say that theater is not only uh, a healing and a confronting and changing and transforming possibility in uh, during the play or during the, the, the precise experience of the encounter of spectators and those who are in the scenery. But it's very important all the process that comes from theater that changes many things in all the participants. And in Mexico also has become uh, a process in certain, inserted in communities. Laura has been working on this a lot too in other place that uh, changes through the process because it's done with people that is involved as, as a subject or as an object of uh, analysis in the place. So it's great to have these spaces and uh, well, good luck and keep on seeing. Thank you very much. And thank you, thank you to all of you for participating and congratulations Laura and Juan Carlos for such an incredible play and such an incredible performance. I think I've told you before how much I've enjoyed it and how I, I think it was fascinating and so well, well made. I don't think I got a, a chance to say that. Um, as for those of you watching, uh, thank you so much for staying all this way. Um, and don't forget that you can donate um, to the company. Um, there is a link that should show up. Um, and also join us again next time in two weeks time to watch uh, clips from a theater company from Afghanistan this time. It's called Seymour Theater. And we will be talking with their general director and some of their collaborators uh, about so social theater and women's rights in Afghanistan. So see you in two weeks time on the 28th of September. Bye. Bye. Bye bye.